Hello dear ones, it's Alice, I'm of the stars, and I have an addition to the explanation about current refinement in astral matter as a result of the uh, awakening. You see, according to theosophical theories, uh, ref astral matter is segregated into concentric sh shells in the astral body of a person after they pass on. And these are slowly worn down and worn off until the person is in a very high astral plane, starting with the coarsest um, astral matter, which uh, makes the person perceive only the coarsest of astral planes, and then wearing off on into the very fine astral matter of the heaven worlds. So then I have a timeline theory that you can read more about in my blog. And that blog I propose as an alternate theory regarding astral reality. Um, and I just thought I'd explain a little about points of view in the development of theories about the way things are uh, and how, from a certain perspective, um, a theory such as the concentric ring theory of the theosophists is perfectly valid, whereas from a different perspective, perhaps an expanded perspective, a theory such as timeline optimization and timeline merges, timeline loops to the past or the future, is more helpful for humankind. You know, in the old days, uh, we had a prevalent theory of the universe where the sun revolved around the earth. And that was because, um, I think it was Copernicus, did I get it right? Was standing on earth and, and noticed what seemed to be the sun revolving around the earth. And for a long time this geocentric notion of, of the nature of the universe was pretty much universally held by humankind. And then came along someone who proposed that Earth revolved around the Sun. Now this was kind of important. First of all because it was truer for a greater variety of beings in the universe. Such as for instance the solar devi who had a different perspective on the motion of celestial bodies than did we humans on Earth or such as the angelic realm, which could see things from a different, totally different perspective as well. The Devi are actually a, a, um, one branch of the angelic realm. Anyway, um, and also this more, com this more helpful theory of solar-centric um, solar system helped humankind to predict various sky events that were difficult to explain according to the old theory. So here we have an instance of one theory from the point of view of one person and accepted by humankind for a long time as being helpful and another theory somewhat more refined from a different perspective um, supplanting that later on. The same is true, as I understand it, although I don't know much about it, of string theory as a predictive uh, tool. There were two theories preceding that which partly explained what was going on, and then string theory has been put forth that explains a good deal more. And uh, multi-dimensional, multi-temporal theory is, is a little like an advancement over the current notions of cause and effect as as a um, model for the universe. Uh, multi-dimensionality and multi-temporality, working with timelines and working with dimensions, offer humankind many more possibilities in terms of self-evolution than did previous theories of cause and effect. When we look at the history of religious doctrine, um, the notion of heaven and hell and um, purgatory are, uh, are like the idea that 
of of um, are like these ideas that are are valid in their own way, but only from a certain perspective. And the reason for this is this: they offer a person a slice of reality based on only one timeline. And uh, further, only one moment in the astral life. So basically what happened is that some great prophet or sage, or maybe a number of them in, in centuries past, realized what, or viewed in what ha was happening when people passed on what state they found themselves in, in the astral form, depending, as we know, upon the coarseness or refinement of their astral matter. So that person wrote down as truth that a person who lives a life that coarsens their astral matter finds themselves in great suffering when they pass on, and that a person who lives a very saintly life where um, the astral matter becomes very refined, finds themselves in a heaven world when they pass on, and then there are those people in between who end up in purgatory. All right, Very valid from the standpoint of that one moment in time when we pass on. But there are other perspectives on this church doctrine. There's the evolution of the soul through the astral plane into the mental plane. And the time spent learning, soul uh, absorption of the soul lesson of an incarnation there. Then there's a choice of a new incarnation and a, and a new, new soul lesson. There's a notion um, that at the same time, moving on into multi-temporality, that at the same time, in the same instant of the now, we're living out all these incarnations as eternal souls. So we can switch from incarnation to incarnation anytime we want. We can switch within an incarnation to the beginning or the end of it. We can switch also dimensionally as far as quality of our existence is concerned and, and spatially from presence on Earth to presence in any solar system to presence in everything at once, you see. And so we have, in our expanded perspective, we have uh, causality within a timeline which holds the timeline together. We have um, many, uh, we have the possibility of complete free will as to where we place our awareness on what timeline we, or what dimension we place our awareness so that our soul experience becomes whatever we wish it to be. And this, uh, this decreases the importance of, of, of cause and effect on our, on our awareness. You're no longer trapped within cause and effect, a causal reality. Um, we exist more in the realm of free will and of the all. And this is, these, these are features of the current uh, space of time in which we find ourselves here on Earth for the next 2,000 years. So I say best to take advantage of these tools and learn what we can about this new way of viewing reality. See what it has to offer us in the terms of soul wisdom and soul learning.